We are wrapping up a very long evening here at Tony P's and Marina Dove. So don't come now, but we'll be back here again to do it. This is El Tri's Online's podcast. Happy to be involved. My name is Max Pretos, the Soccer OG. You're also checking it out on our channel. And uh, here with Fernando Garcia. Before we get into all the action, Fernando, you got your wish. Mexico looked, and they got the three points. So what does that mean for Tata? I'm hoping that he's leaving. <laughs> I'm hoping it's the end of, of, of Tata's era. The end of Tata. I don't think it's going to happen. Because uh, at the end of the day, as the smoke clears here after 11 games in World Cup qualifying in CONCACAF, Mexico now have some breathing room, like the United States. And we'll talk about their 3 0 victory over Honduras earlier. Four points ahead of Panama. The big loser out of all of this. There we are. We are at Tony P's here in the marina in beautiful Los Angeles, California. The big loser out of all of this, and they haven't played badly to deserve better, is Panama. Because now Costa Rica, who were victorious in Jamaica, are right behind them. Where do we start? Uh, let's start with that penalty. So Mexico, 1-0, defeating Panama. They still look sluggish. It was Guardado Herrera. I, you, did all, you were right on two things. Mexico would play well, but they'd get a win. And you also said, I like the bench better. And when they went to their bench, it came alive. Lainez, Tecatito, Julian Arajo, the dual national, got in. I thought he looked great. He picked up the pace as well. He finally made his debut with the, with the Selección Mexicana, which I was hoping so you guys wouldn't take him away from us. It's official now. No more. Because <laughs> we talked about that in our last video. So Arajo is off the market. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, I wish uh, El Tata would understand that some of the bench players are in better shape at the moment than the, the players that he would put as starters. And regarding the PK, it was not a PK. It was... It I, it could have been, but this is my belief. In a game that's been contested so hard, and Panama, I think, had more shots on goal than Mexico. It was a bang-bang play, and like Lainet, legs did get tangled. There was a ball in the middle. I, I haven't got the best look. I was looking online for better looks. I had a quick look with a replay. I would never have called it. It's just not a pretty way to, to take the three points. And if you... I think this game was very similar to the one against Costa Rica. Just because of the penalty kick, that's why Mexico ended up... That's the only difference, huh? Yeah. And I still think El Tata should be gone because this is the type of soccer that we're going to see from the Mexico team in the future games, in the World Cup. And if Mexico plays like this, the United States is going to beat them in, in, in <laughs> March. That will be with fans there. And you could obviously no fans there the last two games. You could feel it. And I, I was wrong on that. I said Azteca will still have some will still have some energy in there. They will still have Azteca because of being home field, because of the altura, because of the contamination. Thank you. <laughs> who told me that was that? Uh, who, who said that last time? The contamination. That was you, Joe. They're, yes. in, they're in good shape. So that game, you know, USA is looking better than Mexico heading into that game. There's no doubt about it. Now, Mexico did have a goal disallowed. So VAR was there. The ball came up on the byline, and they did see it was out. So it was a good usage of VAR. That goal would have stood in the last round of games. And then Raul Jimenez also missed a point-blank chance. He converted the penalty, but he did not... He does not look like Raul Jimenez yet. He's not there. So that's a big concern for Mexico because Funes Mori people didn't like. Raul Jimenez didn't wash you over with confidence, did he? Not completely, but I, I understand because he's coming out of an uh, injury and um, he, doesn't have, he didn't get to play the first two games. So I, I understand why he might not be at his fullest at the moment. So hopefully for the, for the next round, uh, he would be better. To our Canadian viewers, I, I apologize to you again. I bought all the Canadian hype. I drank the Kool-Aid, but I said El Salvador was going to win. Canada goes on the road, consistently does it, wins 2 settle. A goal by Jonathan David in stoppage time. Atiba Hutchinson also scored. Canada have not qualified for the World Cup yet. All they need is another win. They'll, they'll, next round of games, they'll be in regardless of what happens, according to my maximatics, as I like to call it. It's not official, but it's good. Canada keeps going on. El Salvador, we had that whole skirmish at the beginning saying they weren't going to play. Probably, we didn't see that game as thoroughly to be, I'm going to be perfectly frank, but it had to have affected them. We thought it may give them a pop. It actually was in reverse. Canada just keeps steamrolling, and they look like a, a, they are just the same team. Where Mexico and USA 
Fernando are here, here. Canada's been like this the whole time. And that's the sign to me of a good team. It's definitely a good team. It's, it's gotten better throughout the past few years. But something definitely they have to keep an eye on is to continue playing good until the World Cup. From March, which is the end of the qualifiers, till November, which is the beginning of the World Cup, it's what, six months, seven months? They have to. People got to get back. games, by the way. People got to find games. They got to get their players games as well as we look at the updated standings. And Canada, you look at the cutoff line, which is really Costa Rica. So nine points. There's three games left. So that's nine points. So Canada would have to lose three. Costa Rica would have to win three. So Canada's in and still have not tasted defeat. Incredible goal differential. They've been a phenomenal. They've one of the best stories in the world. So they're the big story out of CONCACAF. Panama, the hard luck story here. Because they actually played well over these three games. They came back and beat Jamaica. It got away from them, certainly, though, uh, in a big game against Costa Rica to start. And now the Ticos just behind them. And the games that come up both have two home games. And they both play Canada. But I worry about what it's going to be like Canada because Canada may not have a lot to play for. So maybe they say they send the under-20s, the reservas, what have you. I hope so not. I, think, I don't know if they're going to play strong, so, but Canada's going to determine who makes fourth place if USA and Mexico do finish second and third. I think Canada's not going to uh, hold back. They, they you're right. We, you're right. <laughs> How dare <laughs> I underestimate and say that Canada's not no, going to come I mean, out full throw. You're right. They've been, uh, this is one of the, the few qualifier rounds where they're playing at their fullest potential. I feel like they're going to go. continue. They, they, they want to keep this going leading up to the World Cup. So I, I feel like they're going to go all out. And we have some comments, so keep them coming. I just feel bad for Panama because they might miss out on the World Cup, and they have done everything to make a World Cup. They had a COVID concern in this window. You have to deal with it. But Costa Rica, they have the best goalkeeper in CONCACAF, and it's proving its importance once again as they went to Jamaica. Jamaica's been a huge disappointment. Honduras has been a huge disappointment. El Salvador have been... A promising development, but a disappointing result this time around. So those are the bottom three that have been set adrift. We're going to bring in Joe Rodriguez here. I want to get his thoughts on Mexico before we start talking about the United States and everything we see. Are you, are you, do you feel confident Fernando Mexico is going to the World Cup, or are there still worry you about what's going to happen in these next three games? I, I think after this game, I'm a little, a little more confident. But if you would have asked me. Two hours ago, I would have told you like no. Like an hour ago, oh, yeah, 30 like minutes. Hour, yeah, I would have told you no. They're if not they tied go. this game, it was cero a cero for a second straight game for Mexico, you would have been... I would have probably thought they weren't going. The reason I think it's important is because the United States are going there. Now they have, they got new ideas. They got uh, confident Christian Pulisic. They got this cold game out of their way. They got uh, Kellen Acosta playing well. They have Luca De La Torre developing. The USA is probably going to feel like they can get a win in Mexico, or at the very least, a tie. The way Mexico's been playing, although Panama's been very good, Costa Rica's turned out to be a really good outfit. The USA has to feel confident, even though there'll be fans, but there might be... What do you think the fans are going to be like for Mexico when they get there? They're not going to be thrilled, but they're going to still be... It's still going to be a packed house, right? It's still going to be a very raucous atmosphere. Yeah, they have a very uh, important role to play in that game. They have, Especially after what Herrera said about the fans not being there and not making the opponent feel intimidated, they have to show up in this game, especially against the United States, and especially at this point in the, in the qualifier rounds. They have to have to show up, and, well, Mexico needs all the motivation they can get. So far be it for me. And, again, Azteca is still Azteca, and through it all, they haven't lost any games there in this last cycle here. The, but they've dropped points to Costa Rica. They've dropped points to Canada, but dropping points to Canada is is pretty much everyone's dropping points to Canada. Hey, we're here at Tony P's. We're really trying to push it here with El Tri Online and the Soccer OG going live on these streams, get you involved. We're getting out of my basement. It's not a basement, but it's a little room where I have my studio. <laughs> it gets a little lonely in there. I'm in my pajamas most of the time, but I want to get out of there. They're nice pajamas, they're silk. But I want to get out and I want to come around. Now, Joe Rodriguez made this all possible. Look at this great shot. And calling the bars. Setting up, there's three cameras here. There's a whole edit bay system. There's a, a, a crack crew of like 15, 25 people in here. Maybe not many, but it feels like it. There he is. And all business Jeff Hernandez. Wave one for Jeff. That's right. Okay. How uh, your thoughts on the Mexican performance, Joe? Uh, 
plain and simple disappointing. It's um, an embarrassment. I think that we need to have uh, this team be more dominant. Uh, like they say in Espanol, contundente. Contundente. That's right? your word of the day. We're learning Espanol. They just lack uh, that lethality inside the box, and it's uh, it's always been Mexico's Achilles heel at the end of the day. Lethality. Is that a Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Contundente lethal, lethalidad. Um, there's a lot of good Spanish words that we got to learn as, a, as, it, as it applies to football, so we're going to get that. Do you think they're, they're, they're in, though? Yeah, yeah, I think they're in. I think that, um, you know, it... it you know, call it what you want, call it what, what it may be or, or, or what have you, but there's just too much money at stake, man. The, what, too much money. What do you think stake. of the penalty? Eh, it was mean. all right. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not an egregious penalty. No, it could have been it, worse. It I mean, I've seen been. worse. I've seen worse. I've seen much worse. It was, uh, I think it was Bar Bar Barcenas of Panama, who's a really good player who got involved. There was a little uh, pushing and shoving afterwards. I, I just feel, I feel really bad for Panama. But it's come down to this. You've got to, you can't have bad days, but that's what's going to happen. You got here. more comentarios, by the way. Uh, Tony Yayo saying, bring back Hercules and Sebi Salazar. Well, they're on uh, ESPN. <laughs> Go get them. Football em, Americas. We <laughs> love those guys. By those, that show's the best show in the business, other than our show here at Tony P's, of course. Of course. So, uh, but this is kind of Mexico. This reminds you of 2014 where it got really bad. Yep. And they qualified and they almost made El Quinto Partido. So, um,. Bad qualifying for down the right is like it's nothing uh, out of the norm for Mexico. Fans of Mexico are used to this, right? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we've gotten used to, to this type of situation with Mexico. But you keep asking if Mexico's going to make it to the World Cup. And yes, they might. But I don't want to see a Mexico that doesn't have good soccer in Qatar. You know, it's going to be very disappointing to see Mexico not win over there, you know. And, and I think that's what's most concerning about this whole situation, and I, I think that's why the whole fan base wants Tata out. <laughs> Tata looks cómodo, like he was there. He was like, he d does not look a guy who has any pressure on his shoulders whatsoever. He feels like he's going to finish this cycle, and he is going to finish the cycle. And the same can be said for Greg Berhalter, especially after this win. But even if he didn't win Honduras, in all likelihood, it's too late for a change. Although a change, of, maybe not, I shouldn't speak for Mexico because we saw that in 2014 when things got bad. They hired, you know, 7,000 coaches over a two-week span. That's an exa exageración. <laughs> I was just kidding. So there are the upcoming schedule, and we see March 24th for the United States. We, I guess it's a good time. I saw some people saying that they didn't think it was a penalty. I didn't think it was a penalty, but I'm not going to sit here up in arms. It was a soft penalty. We'll call it that. The United States upcoming schedule, that's the biggest remaining game right there, if you ask me. March 27th in Orlando against Panama because it would put the United States in, assuming they don't win in Mexico. Let's say they get a tie. They would have to beat Panama to make sure, and Panama would need something out of that to make sure they don't get caught by Costa Rica. And there you see USA will travel March 30th. We got some tweets also uh, by our old friend Paul Carr, uh, Max. I'm going to actually sneak that, okay, let's see. that in right He's there. He's always good. With Mexico's win, Canada has clinched no worse than fourth place and a playoff spot. So they got the second, the second uh, chance cafe. And he says they will, with a win at Costa Rica or a draw and a Panama, they'll get it. Mexico USA winner clinches with a Panama loss and a Costa Rica loss draw. And if that's saying, if there is a Mexico USA winner. Quickly about the United States, they're going to take some momentum. The big story, and I don't want to bore you to death, although it's nothing boring, it's actually interesting because we've never seen anything like this, was the weather. And we, we got reports, Grant Wall saying that two players from Honduras dealing with hypothermia, which is a very, very serious word, something you never want to hear from a doctor, quite frankly. One of them was Buba Lopez, the goalkeeper, and I was surprised he didn't go there. But now, do the math. Sub-zero, it's freezing and you're a player you get to run on the sideline you get a jacket goalkeepers you're there with your gloves what can you do what can you do to stay warm so Buba Lopez had to leave for, with hypothermia we're, we're we're hearing and Matt Turner had a similar situation you look at the photos online he looked terrible and he still came out for the second half but no human being should go there we have seen so many tweets and comments from U.S. current U.S. players past U.S. players media members saying that 
I saw one from Brad Guzan saying that uh, U.S. soccer has blood on their hands because of what happened with the Honduran players. If anything happens to those guys, this is a real bad situation. And I, I would like to say it's a lesson for U.S. soccer, but are they going to heed this? Or are they going to be stubborn and say, we're going to put games in here? Not that they'll have another qualifier in January, but this was a huge screw-up. This was something that they should have alleviated earlier in the week and said, we cannot risk this. Maybe after they played Col in Columbus, which is okay for Columbus. Columbus, you don't think it's going to be that cold. But Minnesota in January, 50-50 chance it's going to be this cold. And we saw those images, Fernando. It was, ter it was terrifying. The players got a good... I'm, I'm really impressed how the players reacted. The U.S. players started plucking around. And in the end, the U.S. soccer was right. Honduras was affected more by the cold. But <laughs> that should... I never want to see that again. Yeah, it, it was terrible. And um, I get really cold here in California during the winter. I can't... Some guys were able to drop some, uh, some gloves, but Christian Pulisic came on and able to score a goal. A lot of people are saying, do you bring him in because he is injury prone and that kind of weather could affect him? In the end, it was good for the U.S. to get Christian Pulisic in because he got the goal. He got his confidence, which uh, wasn't there either. So it's either injuries or confidence for Christian Pulisic. And now no injuries, thank goodness, by the grace of God. And the confidence hopefully back up, although now he goes back to Chelsea where his confidence could go down again. I'm hoping that he, he continues with a confidence boost once he go, goes back to Chelsea. I, I hope he gets, uh, you know, a little more playing time over there. Um, hopefully not too much confidence for the Mexico game. Yeah. Were you impressed by the way the U.S. played in that game? Yeah. yeah. Actually, after the 2-0 loss against Canada, I, I thought maybe they were going to be a little, um, you know, a little down. But they, they came out strong. They score three goals could have been four right but um yeah definitely I, could have I, been five or six they yeah. had a lot of good shots one of the big stories for the u.s is they didn't score a set piece goal in all the qualifying christian pulisic when he's at chelsea so I, I looked at the records so set pieces are penalties corners free kicks direct indirect and yeah for, that's it so there's four categories Seven players have taken one of those for Chelsea. Jorginho, Mount, James, Ben Chilwell's taken one. Uh, it's a long list. I'm not, I can't remember every one. It's late at night. Christian Pulisic has not taken one of any kind, a penalty, a free kick. But he took all the free kicks for uh, all the set pieces for the United States. He didn't today. Kellen Acosta did, and they got three goals off of set pieces. And even, uh, Joe, as I'll bring you back, when this is a big decision coming up, whatever happens on March 24th, when he came back on the field, Christian Pulisic did not take set pieces. Luca Della Torre, who was a nice story, did take some set pieces, but Christian Pulisic did. So I don't think when March 24th rolls around, un unless Kellen Acosta moves to the bench, which is probably what's going to happen, maybe not after this game. I think you need him. I think he's proven that you need this. If Kellen Acosta's on the field, he's your number one set piece taker. Christian Pulisic has proven that he shouldn't be taking set pieces for the U.S. And if he did at the Aztec, I think that's a mistake. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a really difficult thing at the end of the day because, you know, it's a, the complexity involved, right, in the selection of the players. But also, like, my concern is how much competition, how much play time a lot of these players are going to have with their respective European teams. It's, a, it's, it's grueling. Playing time. Guys who didn't play heading to this, it showed. Exactly. So, so I, I think that's something to consider, uh, especially as the, the, the seasons, you know, start winding down. Uh, but, Max, really quick, I mean, I want you to, like, take a look at some of the comments. These are good comments. Said, yeah. A lot of people tuning in, so we want to thank everybody for tuning in and, you know, uh, you know, just giving us their opinions and their thoughts. Best part about these type of shows is that everyone can have an opinion, you know, and we love that part, right? I see Jesse saying Chucky injured, and he did. And this is becoming a problem for Chucky. He's a, we talk about Pulisic being on the fragile side. Chucky, it was a bad fall, but he's, he's, he's got to put him himself. I, mean, I know, you know what it's like when you know, have to learn how to fall? You can't, you know you're going to get fouled if you're Chucky. He's that kind of player. So he's got to prepare for those kind of things. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's happening a lot. 
and Chucky Lozano's too important for him to be injured. We don't know the extent. It, it looked like he kind of landed on his shoulder. Hopefully he just got a, a strain or winded, but it, he was on the floor for a long time, then they took him off. And, and what do we think about with Chucky and his injuries? Are you How worried are you? I'm really worried, actually, because he's a really good player, but I don't think he's been able to show his full potential in these qualifiers because he's been injured since Gold Cup against uh, Trinidad and Tobago, right? So, and then after that, I think he got injured again with uh, uh, Napoli. So he he's been injured throughout this whole pa- this past year, and it hasn't been it hasn't allowed him to play at uh, his fullest. So that's really concerning going to the World if Cup. If there is no Chucky, what's the alternative? Uh, Vega started with Chucky. I, I would imagine Tecatito's the first guy off. Is it Pineda? Do you, mi- do you mix the formation a little bit? If Chucky cannot go for Azteca. I would like Tecatito. But like you said, you, I think you really like Pineda. He's not a bad option. But Tecatito like, right now was, would be my first pick. Can I get some Pineda love on the comments? No, he, he's really good. Um, unfortunately, I, I feel like Tata doesn't like him that much. Hey guys, he doesn't I'm, I'm, give him that much playing time. I'm going to show you uh, really quick uh, this, uh, this suite that we got here so you guys can check it out. Uh, it's uh, regarding Guardado Senor specifically. Chief. So it's basically saying that Guardado uh, becomes the first player in CONCACAF uh, to get um, to amass 100 victories with his national team. And it's pretty impressive when you look at the other names on that list, Max. And that is Murderer's Row right there. Ramos, Casillas, Ronaldo, Xavi, three of the big, uh, that golden generation of the Spanish team and Cristiano's obviously. That's incredible company to keep. He's a great player, Andres Guardado. And I'm glad he reached that. I just don't know any more games you want to put him there because once it, it, first half it was slow, still slow with Herrera. And although I, I, my, my issue is more with Herrera. Herrera, when he loses the ball and the bat, that midfield trio, they get separated. And there's these big gaps. But Herrera is the, the middle of that part. So I think when Mexico's not clicking, I think he's more to blame than Guardado in this case. Guardado, but Guardado doesn't have as much responsibility. Is that fair? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. And, and it's unfortunate for Herrera because... He has a great. He has had a great career. He's been a great player. He went to Europe. He's done great in Europe. But right now, towards the end of his career, he's struggling so much with La Selección and with Atlético de Madrid. You know, and um, I wish I could see him more in Atlético Madrid, and I wish he could do better right now. Uh, it's only fair for for the way he's he his career has been. Has yeah. been. More stuff coming your way, guys. Here, check it out. I would. I would. Uh... Here we go. Here, let, let's watch. Oh my goodness, that's that's bad. So you guys be the judge now that you see it. In uh, and I'll, I'll say this to the Mexican, el público mexicano, because it's a it's a quote you've heard many times. No era penal. <laughs> Hashtag no era penal. <laughs> they always won. <laughs> <laughs> the Hollandeses, the Hollandeses owe you one. Yeah, no, no, uh, poor no Panama. comment. What no did comment. Panama do to you? No comment on that. Man, on that's that a video. crazy video. We gotta thank Jeff, Jeff Fernandez for that. But why isn't VAR Fernandez, taking a look? Uh, uh, why isn't VAR taking a look at that? <laughs> Jeff Fernandez. Jeff Hernandez. Hernandez. I said hijo, that. Hijo de Hernan. I said Hernandez. <laughs> no, I'm the one that said Fernandez. Okay, Jeff Hernandez, uh, who is uh, we like to call him Scoop because he found that video. But that's that's really bad. To be fair, the VAR has been completely garbage in, <laughs> in Liga MX and in the Premier League. I, I just don't like the VAR. There's a, there is a little foot around, but, I mean, where is he going? There is some contact. I, you know what? I will say, if VAR reviewed that, the guy upstairs could look at it and say, well, there was contact, so never mind. I don't know if – great combat. It, how is it Chucky's fault he got thrown to the ground? I, I, I just think it's an issue of how he learned to fall because of his injury history. I know it's crazy. I just want him to play. I don't want him in those situations, going full bore. You know, you kind of roll, you land on your back. Didn't they ever teach you that? But again, I uh, think he's just a small guy, you know? He is. He is. So what, did, what was the Greg Berhalter comment there? That was funny. He blames uh, Greg Berhalter again, as we said in our last video. I'm always defending Greg. It's a tough job. I think he's done a lot of things well. I think the players like to play for him. He's given the guys the opportunities. And every single new guy that people wanted to fast track, he's gone at the right pace from Chris Richards, Busio, Wea, Aronson. He brought them along the right time, and then now they're featuring. And Luca De La Torre got his first start, and it's going to be more. It shouldn't have happened sooner. 
now is the right time. But Greg Berhalter, after the Canada game, saying that the, uh, Canada, that the United States was dominant and more physical, I, you can't say that publicly because it became a, a laughing stock. Like Stephen A. Smith was poking fun. Michael Wilbon and PTI were poking fun. And they don't follow soccer, but that's what they remember because you, you leave an impression with the words you say. And we can't have that in U.S. soccer. It's good that they're following U.S. soccer, but you want them to follow U.S. soccer for the good news, not because of that. So uh, uh, Greg Berhalter and U.S. soccer, they want this in their back, in their rearview mirror. Hopefully the Honduran players are good, and this St. Paul situation never comes again. I mean, all we talked about was this cold. Is that gonna is that gonna put him in a tough position? Can he lose? No. His job. I don't no. think I don't think Tata or Burhalter will lose it. Even we saw one question there. I want to get even they said if Tata goes to fourth, would he get would lose his job? I don't think they would do that ahead of a game against New Zealand. It's a very risky move. No, we can agree on that. I don't like your negativity. <laughs> <laughs> I think he should be kicked out as soon as uh, this guy today ends. But you know, Fernando uh, Pink Slip Garcia. <laughs> Waldo, a guest on the Soccer OG podcast. If this was, were in Mexico and the stands were full, seriously, how is that not a penalty? That was the El Salvador game, correct? And it was... That is That correct. is a Canada bullying over. What a mess. What a mess, CONCACAF. Come on. It's always been a mess. and The refs are always... Um, it's been... Yeah, I'm not too sure about the refs' potential to be refs. I mean, they make so many mistakes. I thought maybe with the VAR they were going to get better, but they didn't. The, the ref in the USA game was hot and cold, <laughs> figuratively, uh, just cold literally. And then this penalty, I thought the, the ref in the Mexico game was okay, but the refereeing is an issue, this scheduling is an issue. Every, it's not, we've got to improve collectively. I know that's, we've been saying this for 30 years, but all these things have to improve because it's a good product. These are fun games to watch. We've been here. We loved it. We love watching these games. And with Canada now involved, it's another country of a high level. Canada's going to be ranked probably close to 30 in the FIFA rankings. They used to be in the hundreds. So they've moved up. So it's a better product, but we always have all these issues. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, regarding Canada, I really hope they can continue with this great soccer that they're showing coming to the World Cup. I really hope they, they manage to make it out of the group stage. Maybe make it past the fourth game, and, and let's see how far they make it after that. Well, this is why I bring up the FIFA rankings, because USA and Mexico have good FIFA rankings, so they'll probably be in the second pot, which means technically you're in the top 16 teams, which means you should qualify. So I think USA and Mexico will both have a good chance unless they get a crazy draw. And when I say avoid the team, if you're USA and Mexico, you don't want in your group in pot one, Brazil or Argentina. You want a European team so that you don't get another European team. I think that... Kind of makes sense. Canada's probably going to be in pot three at best. So that's going to make it hard for them. That's the only reason I would say that they, uh, their draw won't be, their draw will be a little harder. But the way they're playing, I mean, they're making traveling, we always say USA, Mexico. You can't get points in Honduras. You can't get points in El Salvador. Yeah, you can. Yeah, Canada made, made it look easy, huh? They're making everyone. <laughs> that's, it, that's what's good, too, because Canada's going to say, hey, uh, Tata, Greg, uh, Canada got points. That's what the Mexican public public's going to be. The media is going to be saying no. Canada did it. Yeah, I mean they're going to use them as use them as reference now from or from now on, and I hope they hold the United States and Mexico to a higher standard after after seeing what Canada is doing. Very well, good point. How good do you think Canada is going to go here, Joe? Are you excited, or do you think this is good for qualifying and the World Cup comes around and Canada will be? It was a cute story, but it's over now. So I got a funny story to tell you guys, because one of my... Uh, you always, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. He always has a good story I, to say. I, I, I got a lot of historias to tell, but um, one of my old uh, roommates is actually uh, Canadiense from Toronto, uh, like our good friend uh, at Denverk, right? At Denverk. Um, anyway, I, I, I'm actually really excited because I know a lot of Canadian peoples, and they're like really good people, right? Most of them very nice. Buena gente. Muy buena gente. Uh, but I think that it, it's it's an exciting thing. First of all, I, I absolutely, without a doubt, think that they're going to make to make it to the World Cup. Like, I mean, it would be a catastrophic <laughs> failure if they were, you know, not to make it even to a playoff, right? Um, but I think what's most important is also the 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 cultural difference that they bring to the table, right? It's a uh, 
similar, I like that. Similar to the United States in a way, right? Uh, extremely diverse, crazy backgrounds, and, and they just have so much upside and so much potential and the economic backing that they have versus a lot of unfortunate, you know, um, Caribbean and other Central American nations. Mexico's a, ro- a soccer-rich country, right? So they have that into to their advantage. But Canada, uh, Canada's economic uh, uh, power might have yeah. something to say. And it's always uh, the number one trading partner for the U.S. is Canada. So economically, they're up there. I know their soccer needs, but this will probably put some more money in the coffers of Canadian soccer. I mean, they've been doing this way with uh, Alfonso Davies, right? Right. And they've never been this. when They have never used to make a, the hex. They would always fall short. They wouldn't even get this far. Now they've made it, and they are in, in first place running away with it. Canadian soccer, the public's going to get behind them and money will start coming into it. I feel, I feel bad for places like Costa Rica and Honduras because I don't feel bad, I should say, because if this happened eight years ago and Canada was a power, then Central